welcome to another battle report. This is game two of the TNQ tournament in Sweden. And after a big loss against a Hyle player, I will face off against a Lissaman player. Uh, and to start the game, my camera did have a little problem with it, so I lost a lot of picture. And this is actually my first turn, so the whole Lissaman first turn is gone out of this but um, to say about my list I have you can see a better description of my army list in the description below and for his army he have uh, the one that's fighting my lance is his Sarsk have bus and then he have a unit of temple guard with a slan the Lore Master, no, not Lore Master, he knows all the signatures spells. And in the top corner, you can be able to see his Asaurus Warrior block. But and basically, that's his big, big unit. He has some small chef units, he have two young, two Salamanders, some Skink Clouds, a Skink Chief riding a Pterodon, and that's basically it. So for his first turn, he pushes his army forward. Uh, he pushes his cold one rider a little bit too far, I think. He was not aware how hard a Britannia lands can hit because he was not very familiar with the army because it, Britannia is a pretty unusual army to play against. And uh, as you can see here, uh, I got Savage Beast off and I have three characters and I will just eat his units alive and will be able to take any casualties and or so for the first turn I just slam into his column bus and kill a lot of it and get a lot of points and you can see that big tree over there that's a blood forest and we're playing the objective king of the hill and our objective is to keep that hill and if we do we will get 300 points if we keep it in the last in the third turn and three other hundred if we have it in the fifth turn so that's our objective and as you can see on this picture also i move up my small unit of redirect fast cap to get so he cannot charge with his tempo guard and I also push up a, un a single paladin to stop his source warrior from flank charging my uh, fast cav and overrun into my errant lands. And that's basically what happened in my first turn. And this is just a result of the fight. He have a scarlet with one wound remaining left in that unit and some cold one night. And he will break. I will not catch him and he will bounce through the skinks unit in the back and I will just pursue a bit. As you can see on this picture. So for Lissaman turn 2, he is Saurus Warrior, a flank shot, first charge my paladin and I believe. And then uh, he charges my fast care unit and I actually decided to just stay there because uh, he pretty much block up his temple guard from doing anything and I can just either charge them or maybe move around them next turn it really depends on the situation we end up in and um, well his magic do almost nothing uh, he's shifting on Pterodon, charges one of my traps. Um, basically, to talk about his magic, it really didn't work at all. He rolled piss poor. He, he didn't manage to get a single spell off for the whole game and he had a slam. So that's how bad it is. And I rolled 10, 11, 12 and stuff like that and got off a lot of savage beast and curse. And, very good spell to pretty much dominating in the magic phase and get what kind of fight that I wanted to have with 
me having a lot of buffs and he have none of it. Well, this is his other movement, his tumble god, turn around and face my air knight, uh, his skink uh, unit reform to stop my air knight from charging his um, Saurus cab once again. And actually, now I think he, he may one spell this whole game, and it's either Miasma or Harmonic Convergent or something like no, Ice Shard. Ice Shard is it in heaven as well. So, Ice Shard or Miasma or something like that, uh, which make the Blood Forest go mad and hitting on my Aaron Knights a bit and killing some. And. Um, that's it for his magic. And well, his Saurus Warrior goes very rough on my Peasant Cab, but unfortunately for him, he didn't kill enough, so they are still above 25% and they are capable of rally next turn. And he turned them around to face my unit of uh, realm that's standing you can see in the corner of this picture that they are standing there and now we really have lost some picture um, I have moved out my knights from that spot between temple guard and the skink and the sour cab and uh, to stop him from getting a flank shot with his skink skirmisher unit to hold him up forever I have moved a Saladin up in front of his Salamander, so if the Salamander charge, uh, the skin could not wheel around them to charge my knight, and if they didn't charge, the skin couldn't wheel around and charge my knight anyway. Uh, but his Salamander managed to kill my Saladin uh, in his turn 3. So to try to explain all this, this is a big leap in time but you see my small errant unit in the top they have moved aside and uh, now he have faced his skin cord uh, to charge them and they will stand there for a while uh, my realm lands have charged uh, his house warrior last turn and they fled and they didn't roll very high and I did manage to catch them and I ended up next to his uh, temple guard uh, the temple guard then in his turn 3 turn around completely to face my Aaron knights and realm knights and by doing so he faced his back to one of my paladins the one the orange and blue one on this picture and my general slams so they slam into the back of his temple guard and as you can see i have savage bubble up here and i just go ape shit on his temple guard and they lose a lot but they are stubborn and then he sent in a salamander in my flank his next turn and in the top corner over there you can see his skin over there is fighting my paladin green and white and they will pretty much do so for the whole game until i finally manage to break him and run him off the board uh, in late turn six or something like that so well this is a picture after i got off this big bubble of savage beast i killed his slan in a challenge and the temple guard just broke his salamander runs away and it will rally and pretty much stay on the board and uh, well I kill a skink unit his skink skirmisher will rally on the table edge and will actually survive the whole game just by sticking around and avoiding being shot uh, by me and what I did finally this is the last picture of the game. I took out my level 4, my turn 6. He had a skink sheaf flying around a pterodon, killing my trebs. Uh, so she ran out. 
She six dice Amber Spear. She roll Miss Cost. She kills that King Chief, but then she roll uh, a four, I think, four or a three or something. But basically, she got the Dimensional Cascade and she gets sucked into the void, and I lose. 200 ish 200 plus points for killing a less than 100 point skin character that's not a smart trade but sometimes you're gonna take your chances and do some stupid things um, and finally um, well the, I know there is some missing picture and you're missing something but you really don't because like some game, just every roll you do goes your way. My armor save roll was amazing, my magic was amazing. I got off three bubble savage beasts on him, and the only thing he got off, as I told you, it was either my asthma or ice shard on my knights when it's, they weren't even in combat. So, yeah, the dice really betray him, and uh, well. Some games, it's that way too, but it ended up being a, I think, 16 or 17 to me and 3 or 4 to him, and well, it was a interesting game, and uh, well, thank you so much for watching, I see you around.